Let's get the jack. We pulled both shafts out and they're still in one piece. I reckon put a spanner on either end of those whilst they're in the diff and see if we can turn it or what. We can't turn it or what. Should probably get a torch and look inside because you can see through the side gears on the driver's side. If you pull that cover out, you can get a torch in there. Oh, Alright, right, so if you pull that cover out and it leaks oil, yeah. where that shaft this end goes, that goes past the seal, past the diff carrier bearing and into the diff. You can see through the other side to see if it's not dropped out or if the planet gears in two pieces. Just poked a torch in where that shaft goes and the centre pin's still in the diff and the spider gears ain't sat in the bottom so maybe it's the RFW but both CV shafts are alright we've just done the clips on these ones so Charlie's going to stick the shaft on the other side and then we're going to give each of us give it a wiggle like and see if it turns or if it don't turn and then we'll engage the RFW and see if it turns or if it don't turn and maybe We'll drop the RFW selector off the back and have a look inside there. So what we're going to do is, because we've had a feel, then this CV turns pretty freely when it's unlocked. Um, but this is actually turning the side gear, the spider gears, and the other side gear in the diff. But because the left-hand shaft is disconnected, you know, it don't go anywhere. But the left-hand shaft is stiff as fuck to turn. So we're thinking something's binding up on the half shaft on the left-hand side. So we're just going to drop off the back of the diff. There's a little case with a selector fork in it. We're going to pull it off the back and have a look at the selector fork, see if that's fucked. And if the like the hub, selector ring if you like, is uh, all crusty. Whether it's split and actually opening up each time. You know, when you load it, popping out over. We'll have a look anyway. I believe Alistair broke one of them a while back. So, we just dropped the selector fork off the back of the diff and that's obviously engaged and when you pull it I don't know if I can but when the uh, selector forks this side that's engaged when it's this side it's disengaged and they don't look like there's tons of wear on that fork or anything so it should be going in and that's your selector ring if you like so that ring obviously uh, lives on the left hand side half shaft and then when you engage your 4 before the computer tells the solenoids to suck this across and then engage your front diff. It's not diff lock, it's just engage, so yeah, that. You want me to spin the passenger side? It's not actually engaged that much, bud. Really? When that was engaged, that was like here, and if you just shine that torch a bit deeper into the cavity, that's literally only just over. It should be like, you know, here. Can you see the, uh, yeah, yeah, like that's, that's basically where it was. So I reckon that was your problem. It's probably not engaging far enough. Oh really? Yeah, that, this bit is obviously one whole shaft to that left hand CV. Yeah. This bit is just like a star, like a wheel, um, with basically the same as what's on the CV shaft of that, and it just knocks into the diff. Yeah. I've actually got a spare one at work. But basically, um, this whole case, you see this bit here, this is part of the diff, the front of the diff, and this back bit bolts into it. Oh. And then this left hand shaft drops off from here. Oh. So really, what we're saying is, the position of it shouldn't change because it's bolted up from this hand, left hand shaft, which is all the way in. So, you know, it wants to be right over there. So whether we bolt it up, and just slide it all the way to the right on the bolt holes and then make sure this is moving enough this guy because yeah. there's a chance that actuator is even losing vacuum or not moving across enough we could get a vacuum tester on it and check for leaks yeah yeah so you reckon the diff's alright then? I think the diff's alright you want to completely unengage it and then let me turn from passenger side just to make sure she's free yeah that's completely unengaged disengaged I'm for it Bottom, not together. There you go, look, lads. It's tight. Oh, why is it picking up? Actually, 
What? Do it again. It keeps on spinning it. Yeah. It's moving up and down slightly and it's picking up. There's a needle roller inside that, Charlie. I bet, I bet that's fucked. What, inside the... Yeah, where the two shafts go together, yeah. one's got like a nipple, one's got like a hole, and there's a little needle roller bearing on that. So, so do you reckon that the actual diff bit's fine, it's just this extension? I think the diff bit's fine, it weren't fully engaged when you was in that mud hole, Yeah. and wouldn't go in the rest of the night, and I reckon it won't go in because the two circles are not aligned with each other, they're like not concentric, uh. because that needle bearing's fucked. So if we pull that extension housing, so if we undo those three bolts near that CV there, yeah, and the five bolts, I think it's five, yeah, around it's that, five. yank that off the side, and we'll have a look. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. Um, oh, what size are they, 14? Should be 14, and then these are 12 on this uh, actuator bracket. What, my, what, do you need a 14 as well? No, I won't, well. Not for a minute. I need to get the belly pan off as well. Oh Christ. Alright. That's not hard, is it? Yeah, no, it's not hard. You know, you know. Oh, I fucking hate belly pans. So then, yeah, we might have found a problem. It's alright, mate, isn't it? Charlie's just put a washing machine in his carport, as you do. Washing our overalls. Uh, yeah, so. I don't know if you can see how well you can see, but there's a, you can just see the cage in between those two. There you go, look, right in between the join. You need a roll of bearing. So like I say, you might have a spare one at work. It's not even the shaft, is it? It's dirt. Yeah. The shaft. Pretty much. Solid. Oh, it has got solid spots in it, though. Oh, that's rough. So the actual shaft is fucked? That shaft feels rough as fuck. Yeah, this bit, if I can play on that, and the needle bearing. We'll have a look at that. Put that somewhere safe, we'll have a look at that, see if it's scored. Oh dear! Right, crowbar. Actually. What are you thinking? I'm going to pop that out. What's that? That drive. Can you do that, can you? Yeah, you can. Let's get out. Black hands matter. <laughs> Black hands matter. So, yeah, basically that um, little extension piece should sit in the diff pretty snug. And the splines go on the half shaft. Uh, not the half shaft, if I can talk about my arse here. Um, the side gear. Uh, and then and that obviously sort of spins inside the the two side bearings of the differential carrier that kind of spins in it like a dry bearing. There's no um, ball bearings between that and the um, inside of the bearing. I'll show you if I get a chance on another diff. But basically, the diff's held by two roller bearings, and then the either half shaft, if you like, one's a CV shaft, one's this extension, just spins inside it with oil. So, yeah. This. I reckon this is not healthy. We put it on the workbench. Yeah. We're we allowed to get the workbench dirty. Yeah, it's fine. It's metal. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, oh. So that obviously lives on there. Comes across to your little extension, which we'll grab out the diff in a minute. But oh, um, it but just you can fucking hear it and feel it. It's not happy. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the main problems, then, wasn't it? Do you reckon because I've been driving, that's what's fucked up the shaft? No, I expect that to fuck the sort of far shaft up. No, I mean the inside thing. Uh, Possibly, but see how much it runs out by because unless you can get it and wiggle it left and right by hand, there's not much movement in it, it's just tight. I don't think that would have fucked up that other bearer. So, why is that so so loose inside the um, diff? Oh, dude, what? <laughs> look, what? look at this, look. 
Look at that side, and yeah. then look at this side, right? I'm moving this like a little bit. That's not moving at all. That's not moving at all. And then you move it, and it turns that. That's obviously sheared the shaft in between the two. Jesus, man. So we just need to either replace that, but we'll strip this apart for the time being and see how it's broke. Fucking snap the shaft in two. See, Alistair done one of these, and he, because he put a locker in the front of his, he um he left it RFW. This is such a good fit. Um, and he was contemplating welding that solid. And he was like, nah, I'll leave it, I'll leave it. And then a couple of weeks later, he went on some crazy off-road thing, bust that clean off, and was like, fuck it, I'm welding it. <laughs> Fair play. But, yeah, all oh, right, so that's what we've done, which is why it's making the clicking, because obviously it's trying to force this apart and all sorts of fucking different ways. So what do you reckon about that? Oh, my God. And it's buggered the oil seal. Yeah, I did notice the oil seal was... Laying in there. Yeah. I right. I the shaft. <laughs> When you what? When I pulled out the dry shaft. When I pulled my shaft out. <laughs> right, let's strip this down. You old, you old Mark II boys never do any serious off-roading or anything, do you? <coughs> nah, not really. Not at all. <laughs> Just done that on the concrete. <laughs> done that through fucking McDonald's drive through you know? That's what it was, mate. T6 life. And some wheels spinning to pick up the young chicks. Ah, so look, he's fucking done it a good in. Couple of little bits and pieces here and there. <coughs> But look at this crack, there's a crack here, and there's a crack starting here, look where my fingernail is, so you can see the turning's got a little break in it. My god! We were just saying how, if you was in low range, and first gear, and obviously this is past the diff, so that's geared down again, you could have well over 9,000 newton meters uh, running through this fucking shaft, so, yeah. Engine's what 250, first gear is about 4 to 1, so that's 1000. Low range is 2.2, .2, that's 2200, times up by 4.4. You're well in there. <coughs> so, yeah. Yummy. So now we're going to find a new one of these. I've like been in a wooden shed. <laughs> It's a bit hot now. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit hot. Oh. <laughs> Fucking coronavirus. Coronavirus. Look, the old can we chucked out is still burning. Is it really? Yeah. Cleaning the RTV out the hose, yeah? Yeah. Smart. So we've pulled this drive cup, or stub cup, whatever you want to fucking call it, out the spare dip. Because ours are a little bit damaged, didn't it, Charlie? <laughs> Can you see the dents from the needle roller in there? Where obviously she was under a bit of force, just a little bit. So we're changing that, the needle bearing from that one, and the stub from that one, so it's all pucker. So, yeah. See inside the diff there, look. There's a cross pin in there for the spider gears and the planet gears. This is uh, fresh by the way, so that's obviously got a spring clip just like you see these put in there to get it out, either pry bar in there, but if you didn't want to come like ours didn't, get a bit of M12, screw her in, golden. Look at this, what are you doing man? Getting the shit in the shit in there. Nah, don't bother about that, just bodge it. Yeah? Just bodge it. <laughs> oh, it's been refurred professionally, so it's going to get a coat of lacquer. The green won't come out the can. Oh, nice! Look at that. It's definitely um, a bit cold out. It comes out like that. So I'm going to 
going for the orange feeling. It's like spraying a fucking hose pipe, Charlie. I know. <laughs> hey, we run out of thinners, so we could just use the paint and then wipe the paint off because the paint's got thinners in it. Smart thinking. I've got lacquer. Just use that and then wipe it off. <laughs> Smart. I'm gonna have to give this a bit of a clean as well, look. Dirty. Dirty. Dirty, dirty. Oh, we're just fucking <laughs> wire brushed into our new bearing. <laughs> oh yeah. And they'd give that clean as well. Um, I can't remember quite why. I think it's slightly it wider. Front, wasn't it? Oh, it's slightly wider than this, so you've got to do it at a funkier angle. Or drop that side off and then spin the diff as you So you've got to take it out and then spin it and drop it like that. Uh, but is that alright? Will that work? Yeah, it's doing the job. Well, we'll swap, swap the diff another day. <laughs> Let me break it next time. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, oh. yeah. What do you reckon they're going to do about fucking petrol and diesel vehicles? Is it cool? Do you reckon, though? Because they're fucking trying to do away with them. Yeah, but they'll still be on driving around on the road. They'll stop making them, yeah. And one day, I don't, I don't think it's going to be as soon as they think it is, but they will stop making them one day. And then they'll be all gay about it. Diesel will cost £10 a litre. Yeah, yeah that's what it'll come to. They'll, they'll ban them, they'll stop making them, and we'll still be driving around. And then they'll get all butter and be like, oh, well, they're still using them, but, and we'll be driving around in some 20 year old shit box, as they call them. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and we'll just be like, yeah, carry on, crack on. And then they'll probably put diesel up to like three pound a litre. To the point where no one can afford to drive. Yeah. And then we'll start running it on heating oil, veg oil, engine oil. <laughs> that is it, isn't it? You're going to have to, aren't you? Because think about it, a Tesla's got electric motors, but it's got to have a gearbox or something, surely. It's going to need oil in something, surely. So there'll still be waste oil. I know, they I don't have gearboxes. They're not. No, the motors on each I, wheel. I thought it had like a en uh, motor where the engine was and the gearbox. And no, I think they have a motor on each wheel. Fuck. Yeah, four motors. So you'd have to get it from Prius or something. Well, say say tractors are still diesel. You could you could get a bit of red, or you could get maybe tractor transmission fluid, and then put that in your tank, and run it on transmission oil. You should be able to get some sort of oil. Yeah. No, you do something like that, I reckon. Sunflower oil, a bit of water to water it down. <laughs> a bit of water in your diesel tank, nothing wrong with that. I reckon that would be a bit of a craze though, and then it would die down. Like everyone's banging on about electric cars, but I think when it comes to it, and people have got them, and then two years down the line, Tesla are like, no, nah, you can't buy these parts, you've got to buy a new car. People are going to wake up and be like, no, this is bullshit. That is the problem. I don't think it'd be as good as they say it is. Well, you know, if, if if you brought a brand new tester and you paid to have autopilot on it, right? Autopilot? What? Where it drives itself? Yeah. Fucking hell. So you paid an extra ten grand to have the autopilot on it. <laughs> what? Something stupid like what that. What cunt pays ten grand because it can't be bothered to drive? Well, the type of cunt that buys a Tesla. Um, so if you, if you buy that, pay the extra ten grand, I think it's roughly that, to have autopilot, it might be six, I can't remember, six or ten, to have the autopilot. If you then sell that car, yeah. right, Tesla remotely remove autopilot. Why? Because you didn't pay for it. So say you sold it to me, yeah. I wouldn't be able to have the autopilot because I didn't pay the ten grand for the autopilot. Oh, Tesla's a screwy factor, eh? Yeah. That's what I mean, like, if you they literally a, have if complete you put, control over your car. If you put cruise control on this and sold it, just go with it. Yeah. So no, I, mean, I don't like the fact. I don't like that. Tesla have complete control over the car. It'd be like, I don't think you should go to the shops this morning. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Fucking. That they can remotely access your car. Uh, uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Screw that. Don't like none of that. None of that business. Neither do I. That'll come to it, and they'll be like, oh, I'm king of the world. I'll fucking stop you all from leaving your house. Oh yeah. We'll get that. 
Do you reckon he's going for world domination? Well, no, he's going for Mars domination, isn't he? <laughs> he wants to start his own colony in Mars. He's a crackhead. I don't know, he's not far off, far wrong with stuff like that. We we have fucked this planet to a point of, like, no return. So, we're going to have to go somewhere. Uh, we can't survive Not with him, here. though. You are? He, hey, if he colonises Mars, he'll be king, won't he? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, it'll be, he'll be, he'll be the fucking... Earth rules will not apply. <laughs> be basically. like the fucking master. Oh, yeah. Look at this. I think that's why he's going for it. You alright? Yeah. Oh, fucking hell, I couldn't see that. Uh, you can't. Oh, you right? Is he, uh... Oh, no. There's still a little bit of a bogey on each hole. Extra bogeys. <coughs> bogeys. <laughs> That's an 8.1 on the bogey scale. I could just use a bolt to hook that RTV up there. That's all right. You could just pick nose and mark some snot round it like old Wigsy does. Like your bonnet scoop on your Mark III. Yeah. Plastic bin lid. Oh, didn't know you was a plastic bin lid boy. <laughs> <laughs> That Mark III bonnet scoop was a mint though. <laughs> it was a proper job. It was definitely a proper job. Can we use Shane's Welder or something stupid? Gasless MIG. Fuck that again. Yeah, I'd never use one of them again. Gashless MIG. <laughs> Neil's got like a hundred quid fucking MIG welder down at <laughs> And he's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm like, yeah, that's no, not Nothing right. right with it. That'd be alright, I think. Give her a clean up with some petty and some card cleaner. What about that back bit? Oh, well, that looks alright to be fair, mate. Do you want to get a razor blade on it? On what? It's dead easy if you just get a razor blade and just drag it along the top of it. Top of what? Up the surface. Oh, what for? To get the RTV off. Oh, it's off? Get it dead clean. Is it dead clean, is it? Yeah. Oh, alright, decent. you done a smashing job of cleaning that up, boy. Is that a joke? No, it's decent. Oh. <laughs> what, you take the pin? You get a socket over that. A twat of a hammer. Go. She don't take much. Yeah, it's in. It's an RTV. So the needle bearing's already in that little diff extension, whatever you want to call it, that little stub. And uh, once I get this on. Come on. Yeah. Just checking if there's a chamfer on one side of that. Obviously to help engage with that. But there ain't, so... Right. That just goes in there. And uh, Should. Should fucking fit, eh? Let's go on. Do you want me to thread lock it then? That's a bit of a tight fit, bud. Really? Yeah. Getting it on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me it's a fucking different size for the later ones, eh? Well, my truck was only an 05. Yeah. This is only 06. It can't be that different, surely. I wouldn't have thought so, eh? It's going, it's going. It's fucking close, old fit, I tell you. Let me tap it from this side. Oh, man, it really <sighs> yeah, that'd do. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want me to... What bolts come out of it? These ones? Uh, yes. Green ones. I think... <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, you didn't have leather in your last one, did you? No. Let's see how this goes. All the bolts are the same length, despite them being deep in the case. Some just good old boys. Did you stick a pump on, do you? You've got a gasket. Yeah, it comes you, one, don't it? You've got studs in the block. Yeah. You cleaned the block. Uh, no. Get a razor blade and scrape the block. What's the torque setting for these, Charlie? Um, FT? Yeah, I'm just going to guess. Ring her up until she starts getting loose again and just don't go anymore. <laughs> That's what you do. That's the best thing to do in Alley, anyway. In Alley? In Alley, yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way, mate. To be honest, this Ali Carson's on the Ranger, I've always found it quite strong anyway. They're not monkey metal. That'd do. Oh yeah. Oh. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here. You got you. Lost in your arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> So, our TV on that, little bugger. Mm, uh, weave it in. Oh, elbow stuck to the exhaust. Get the oil off of that. There shouldn't be any oil left in there. So, yeah, man. Make doubly sure that that fork over that um over that ring. Firm feeling women. Yeah, she's decent. Right. Got a bit of whaling going. You having fun up there, bud? I put a new one on my last engine, didn't I? You had new battery, new alternator, new battery, had a right old game, didn't you? Yeah. Fuck knows why, though. Well, I had a new battery and then the alternator overcharged it to, like, 18 volts and blew the battery up. Oh, so shit. Why don't you come back from Cheddar or something? Maybe you're saying you blew your stereo. Yeah, it blew your reversing camera and everything. <laughs> Thank you,
You know what will sort that, don't you? A bit of flood water. <laughs> Submersor. Listen to now, but oh man, what was some Jay Reed? ABS sensors on the hubs. No, 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 when you were fucking put them together, you put that bracket on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tighten it up. <laughs> Load it up, tighten it up, and fuck it. It's got slots on them. What? On the actuator. Right. Tuck that in that wire clip up there. And somewhere around here. There's a full cool drive selector switch. Charlie. You know we had that copper washer, yeah. and we put it somewhere safe. <laughs> do, you know, <laughs> do you know where you put it? <laughs> oh, oh mate. Sure. CV in the tub and get the end. You can only do this on the passenger side by the way because the other end is longer on the drive side. Hold it up against the stub and then get her in. Um, and now we've got to take the top off the anti roll mount, put that back on. Please. She actually feels a bit loose. I can't feel any play but she's a bit loose. Five inches too long. Uh, 
and they add a clip as well. Decent. I think it's trying to sort now. I can't remember if you had them like that or like this or. Let's have a look on the other side. I didn't take this apart. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, if you just stick her in four wheel, yeah. RFW's come on, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Alright, and I'll have a look underneath, see if the uh, vacuum's pulled it right over. And then when I've thumped the floorboard, if you just uh, press RFW when you're in two wheel drive, yeah? Yeah. Here we are then, look, that's all the way across, which now means when you turn this, Probably your ring on the gear knob. What? It's teaching a bit. This <laughs> one's you. Give it a cup of tea. Give it a cup of tea. So I'll swing the wheel on. Hey, I'm just going to take this on the front back. It's a mobile work then, these bumpers. Yeah. This, this don't look like a track the wave box, what it is is a workbench, so you get all your tools, you lay them on the top and then when you're tired and you've been working and you forget to take them off, you just scatter them across the road. Lovely jubbly. I'd say that's cool. Yeah, I'd say that's cool. <laughs> you give a host to squeeze? I'll make sure you turn the heater on full, on hot. Uh, not on these. Heater's always going round. Give them all a big squeeze. And yeah, give the bottom loads a squeeze.
fix the front diff. Hey, see you later, I'll walk home. We'll just uh, fix the front diff. And now we're at the start of one of the tracks where we broke it. So, what a better place to test it out, eh? So, he's going to back it up in the mud, give us a little, in the mud or in the ice, I suppose, <laughs> give us a little two wheel drive. That's definitely a two wheel drive. And then put it in four. Let the RFW kick in though, roll it forward till it clicks. It's on. It's on. Go on then, see if she slides. No wheel spin. Four wheel drive. Lovely jubbly. Now let's kill them fucking CVs. <laughs> no, she's alright, isn't she? It's amazing actually, yeah, it's like not even, it's doing a little bit of this, but it ain't slipping. We just have a little drive up there and then back down just that big funnel. On our right, with no winch. Yeah, it's not connected up, is it? Just hold it on the back turn for the time being. <laughs> yeah, push forward, mate, I'm not fucking walking across that. You watch, we'll be walking back to the full truck soon. Then I can balls my gearbox up, you can tell us something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now we've got one run and we can fix the other one. Oh, I think we are. There's all broken ice everywhere. Oh, I need to do a little um, hub switch so I can have four wheel blow. Oh, and yeah. Two wheel blow. Well, I did. I need to ask you again how you. Just put a... Oh no, that guy's just walking his dog, so... Make or break switch. Yeah, there's another road up there. So I guess you're allowed to just hop over. Uh, you just put a make or break switch between the lock solenoid. Anything coming? No. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do what? You I'm not, I'm not cheeky bugger. Again. He's like... You put him away, he's like, oh, I know what's going on. I know your game. Now you're flicking mud at him, you asbo. You, you asbo. Oh, there's a bit of black smoke coming out your exhaust. I really understand. <laughs> All I can say is she's out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn the old RSW off. You know what that smells like? Shit. Success. <laughs> We've Jeez. fixed it. She's moving. Four wheel drive works. Out. Is it leaking oil though? That's the thing. <laughs> that RTV, I don't know how long it needs to set, but yeah. It'll be alright. The oil will fill the hole. <laughs> it's like a never ending fucking oil change. Just recycle. Oh shit. Oh, go on. Get it down. Turbo. Orange, bright orange, molten pistons. That's the one. Oh, look, this tells me the battery voltage, look. Does it? I found this out the other day. 48.8, and it's probably more accurate than a China gauge. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. <clears throat> that's decent. That's a bit, isn't it? Problem. Oh, your Bluetooth reversing like that. Yeah, yeah. They're going to get wired up at some point. I've just got so many down. Put some of that trunk in. Look, you've still got this thing on it.
Get that. <laughs>